The word that comes to my mind, I think, when I heard yesterday about the news, women's ski jumping being a part of the Olympics in 2014 is finally. It's finally happened, and joining me in studio is Didi Corradini and also Sarah Hendrickson, and Didi being the former mayor of Salt Lake City and uh, also the president of Women's or of Ski Jumping USA, Women's, ski, women's jumping. ski Jumping USA. So Didi, thanks for joining us, and Sarah, 16-year-old ski jumper and uh, just darling as can be, happy as can be. You guys are both beaming from ear to ear as you should be. How, I mean, are you relieved? Is, is finally the right word to use? That kind of came to my mind like, okay, it's about time, right? Uh, it's about time, elation, relief, and we've, we're still a little bit numb, I think. Yeah. Because we've been told no so many times mm -hmm. that it has to take time to sink in. Yeah, Didi, let's start with you. Um, you know, and I was reading yesterday that in 1924, that's when ski jumping became an event at the Olympics. Obviously, the women were not involved. So we're looking at all these years of what it's taken to get into the Olympics and seven years of you guys really, really putting in, I mean, just a lot, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get this finally come to a reality. It's been a long haul with so many hurdles, so many obstacles along the way, so many defeats. Yeah. And uh, that's why yesterday was so sweet because... Mm -hmm. Uh, we may have lost a few battles along the way, but we won the war. Finally. Yes, mm -hmm. finally is, is absolutely and right. Dee Dee, let's talk about how you actually got involved with all this. You were you know, a big uh, advocate for getting us the Utah Olymp or the Winter Olympics back in 2002. Um, and then how did you get involved with women's ski jumping? I, here I was, the mayor of Salt Lake, spent 12 years trying to get the 98 Olympics, which we lost by three votes, and then the 2002 games. We got women's skeleton and women's bobsleigh into 2002, and I thought, therefore, we had gender equal Olympics. No one ever mentioned to me that women still couldn't ski jump. I didn't find out about it until after I'd moved up to Park, left office, moved up to Park City, and I happened to run into Lindsey Vann. And Not to be confused with Lindsey Vaughn. I mean, there's a lot of confusion with that. Lindsey Vaughn, ski jumper, Lindsey Vaughn, obviously. A not. <laughs> and people need to get to know Lindsey Vann. She was the 2009 world champion. Yeah. And uh, started talking with her, and she's the one who told me she was a ski jumper but couldn't jump in the Olympics. And I was absolutely shocked and angry and thought this was a discrimination. What's the mm -hmm. problem here? Mm -hmm. And what we found out is that 99% of the people that you talked to at the time, this was seven years ago, when Sarah was nine years old, um, that uh, most people had no clue. And so we had to start the job of educating people, going to the FIS, getting the women into the world championships, getting them nominated to the IOC for Vancouver 2010, which was when the women really should have been in the Olympics. And uh, so it's been an uphill battle ever since. It has, not it's finally gonna be there. Now, Sarah, being a ski jumper, what was it like when you heard the news yesterday? Um. I I couldn't even speak. It was just really exciting. But like Dee Dee said, uh, I think we were really numb. We just it hadn't really sunk in yet. And then, like throughout the day, when you'd get you know phone calls and texts from a lot of people that had seen you on TV or saw it in the paper or something, right. it kind of finally started to sink in, and it just brought a smile to my face. Does it give you this new energy of something to look forward to and get excited about and really have a, you set goals all the time. When I talked to you last time when you came in studio, you have specific goals to try and compete well all season long, but what are your goals now knowing that this is in the future? It's just, it's awesome to have a new event to compete in and then an event as big as the Olympics for the whole world to watch you and just, it just gives you a little bit more motivation to make yeah. that team and train as hard as you can for the next three years and try to be there. When you do train hard, you're a student at Park City High School, but you uh, went to Oslo. Uh, before, last time we talked to Sarah, she was preparing to go to Oslo. Um, tell us a little bit about your season and kind of what you're looking forward to in the next year of training. Yeah, I went to Oslo as well as World Junior Championships in Estonia and another trip in Norway in earlier in the season. And I had some good competitions, uh, not results that I would hoping for, but still stable and um, excited for next time. So, what's it like? Tell us. We're going to show some video here in just a second, just because I I love seeing how you look in the air. I mean, you, 
It, athletes always make it look so effortless, right? I mean, it just looks so effortless, but what's it like when you were in the air? Especially this Oslo video, you're in complete fog. So I was like, oh, how does she know where to go? I'm so freaked out. <laughs> what is it like? I mean, I've been doing it for nine years, and you obviously gradually work up, and so you just have muscle memory that, I mean, it's, I mean, you're still working on things every jump, but getting into your flight position, it, it just kind of happens naturally, I guess, like you don't even have to think about it anymore. Look at that fog. You know, I think it's hard enough what they have to do, and then to try and land in this kind of fog in Oslo, I was like, holy smokes, what a, uh, what an impressive girl you are. So there you are right there on screen. Um, it's pretty amazing to see what you're doing at such a young age already and what you're going to do in the future, especially now with that. Uh, you know, thanks to the help of Didi and a lot mm -hmm. of people who have put in their heart and soul to this, finally the IOC giving us the results that you guys, uh, that we wanted. Mm -hmm. So very, very exciting. So Didi, now that this is, you know, finally set in, what, what, can, what are you gonna do now? We have a lot of work ahead of us. The men have three events in ski jumping. They have the normal hill, the large hill, and the team event. And all we have been approved for is the normal hill. So our next step is we have to go back to the FIS, try to get approval for the large hill, for the team event, and now we're talking about 2018 Olympics and Nordic combined. We need to get that going for women as well. So, so it's just the one that will be for 2014. That's correct. But hey, at but least we've hey, got, yeah. At least they're Olympians now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're so excited to hear this finally. And hopefully, um, I think you brought huge awareness. Um, when you took it to court you know, years ago, I think that brought about huge awareness that there still is a discrimination going on and that women are not. Um, completely into the Olympics like they should be yet. Um, but you've also brought about you know, recognition to other events that may not be there as well. And uh, hopefully getting those involved. So it's gonna be a good thing for you guys as well as a lot of others as well, I feel too. So congratulations. And uh, we you. look forward Thank to 2014 you. in Sochi. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you we'll so be much there. for coming in. I know you will, I can't wait. So best of luck to you, Sarah. Thank you. All right, so that's going to do it for us. We're going to wrap it up here, and then when we come back, weather and trivia. It's kind of looking a little frightful outside. Those clouds are looking dark and kind of nasty. So we're going to tell you about the storm coming up. I guess it's nasty for some and others. It's pure heaven because it means powder skin. We'll have it coming up right after this.